Meet 17-year-old Holden Caulfield. He's been a bit ill recently, but he's ready to tell us what happened to him last Christmas. Don't expect his whole life story or anything. Just the crazy stuff that led to him getting run down and sick. The good news is that Holden is on the mend. And while he might be a long way from home, his big brother, DB, lives nearby and visits him almost every weekend. DB works as a hotshot screenwriter in Hollywood, but Holden thinks that's a massive waste of DB's talent. Holden's story begins on his last day at Pensy Prep back in Pennsylvania. It was December 1949, and he was preparing to leave. He'd been kicked out for his poor grades, but he wasn't too phased about it. Pensy is a fancy school, but according to Holden, it's full of phonies and crooks. It was the day of the grand final football game, Pensy Prep versus Saxon Hall. Big deal. Holden didn't stay to watch the whole thing, just enough to get a sense that he really was leaving. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out, and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks, and back to the video. He'd already been ostracised by his fencing team for leaving all their equipment on the New York subway that morning. He also couldn't stick around because he was on his way to pay a last visit to his history teacher, Mr Spencer. Once he sat down with old Mr Spencer, though, it was all a bit depressing. He had a bad cold and was sitting in his stinky old room, wearing his tired old bathrobe and pyjamas. Holden felt a lecture coming on. Mr Spencer knew Holden had been asked to leave Pensy, and Holden admitted he hadn't told his parents yet. Pensy wasn't the first school that Holden had been booted out of. In fact, it might even be the fourth. Mr Spencer had to flunk Holden in history because he hadn't applied himself. It was one of four subjects Holden failed that term. The only one he passed was English. Just to rub it in, Mr Spencer pulled out Holden's exam paper and read his response aloud. It was so embarrassing that Holden really started to hate the old guy. He continued being polite but let his mind drift. Holden thought about the ducks on the lagoon in Central Park South in New York. Where did they go for the winter? Mr Spencer quizzed Holden about what happened at the other schools and tried to get him to care about his future. But Holden couldn't wait to get out of that stinky old room. So he told a white lie and made his escape. Holden felt immediate relief when he got back to his cosy dorm room at Pensy. His roommate, Ward Stradlater, was still at the football game, so Holden had the room to himself. He settled into a comfy chair, put on his cool new red hat and read his book. Predictably, his peace was ruined by a boy from the neighbouring room, Robert Ackley. He was always barging in, asking silly questions and grossing Holden out with his bad hygiene. He was so awkward, Holden almost felt sorry for him. He even cut his dirty fingernails right on the carpet. Gross! Holden was saved when Stradlater breezed back in from the game. Ackley hated Stradlater's guts, so he retreated back to his room. Stradlater was in a big hurry. He had a date waiting for him in the foyer and needed to spruce up quick smart. Holden hung out in the bathroom with Stradlater while he shaved and made himself pretty. Even though Stradlater was handsome and looked clean, he was a secret slob. He was also the kind of guy who always asked people for favours. On this occasion, he asked Holden to do his English assignment for him, a creative writing composition. Holden didn't answer him straight away and instead started mucking around. He tap-danced and then got Stradlater in a headlock, which was kind of dangerous considering Stradlater was holding his razor. What was Holden thinking? 
He then started badgering Stradlater about his date. Who was the girl? It was a new one, Jane Gallagher. Holden's jaw dropped at this news. He knew her. Two summers prior, up in Maine, the Gallaghers stayed in the neighbouring summer house to the Caulfields. Holden and Jane got along really well and spent heaps of time playing checkers. In fact, Holden had lots to say about Jane, but Stradlater wasn't really listening. He was too busy grooming himself. Just as he was heading out, Stradlater asked Holden again to do his English assignment for him. Holden didn't respond except to ask him to pass on a message to Jane about checkers, as if Stradlater cared. He was such a lover boy. His date with Jane really made Holden uncomfortable. Holden was actually glad when Ackley came back into the room. It was a Saturday night, so after dinner, Holden, Ackley and Mal Brossard took a bus into town. They were going to see a Cary Grant movie, but ended up eating hamburgers and playing pinball machines instead. How wholesome. Later that evening, back in the dorm room, Holden started typing out a composition for Stradlater. He couldn't think what to write about, so he described his little brother Ali's special baseball mitt. Ali died from leukaemia in 1946. Holden was 13 at the time, and Ali was only 11. Holden loved his brother Ali so much that when he died, Holden smashed all the windows in the garage with his fist. To this day, Holden's hand still hurts when the weather gets cold and damp. It was 10.30 at night by the time Holden finished typing. He wasn't tired, though, because his anxiety had kicked in. The problem was, Stradlater should have been back by then. Jane was only allowed out until 9.30. Oh, no. Had Stradlater put the moves on her? Stay tuned to find out. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.